It's TK Friday, and today in the joy of editing, I'll be doing a full edit of a lighthouse on the coast. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and welcome to TK Friday. It's another full edit Friday, and today it's an image by James May. I'm calling this one Lighthouse on the Coast. It's a really beautiful image. It's going to be a lot of fun to process. And as always, we're going to start out here in Lightroom Classic. By the way, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, go to the description of this video, scroll down through. You're going to find a contact me link. Contact me and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, you can download the image and the PDF notes and give this edit a try. Dropbox links are in the description below this video. By the way, the launch sale for TK Grayscale is just about to end this coming Tuesday, September 30th. So you want to make sure you head on over to Tony Kuiper's web store, pick up the new TK Grayscale. You also get uh, Magic Mixer with it. If you already own Magic Mixer, you get TK Grayscale free. Now, use my promo code DK15 during the sale. DK15 equals 25% off. So when you use my promo code DK15, you'll get 25% off anything you purchase over at Tony Kuiper's web store. So it's a really good sale. Take advantage of the savings. When you use my promo code, I make a small commission, and this helps to support my channel. So I really thank you for using my promo code. It doesn't cost you anything and you're saving 25% off your entire purchase. That includes Sean Bagshaw's videos, any panels over at the TK web store. All you need to do is at checkout, use my promo code DK15. You'll get 25% off your entire purchase. Well, go ahead and sit back, relax, and let's jump right into this edit. As always, I start out in Lightroom Classic. Just do some basic edits on the image. I want the image pretty flat going into Photoshop because in Photoshop, I'll do all the heavy lifting and the editing using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I am using a linear profile in this image. I just click auto, make sure I'm not clipping my white or black point. As far as detail, I'm using Lightroom's AI noise reduction, no sharpening on the image for lens corrections. I always check on remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections, and not really a crop in this image, but I just made sure it was going nice and straight. And that is it. Now at this point, I'm ready to go into Photoshop. And so I'll just right click on the image, go to edit in and click on edit in Photoshop 2025. And now let's get started. Now the first thing I do is a balance and contrast of both sky and foreground, just to balance out the image, make sure everything fits together, meaning sky and foreground, and bring up some contrast. I'll be using David Tillett's BNC landscape action just to save a little bit of time, but the PDF notes show you how to do this all manually. By the way, when you purchase TK9 version 3, you did get David Tillett's actions. And you'll find them in the TK9 version 3 folder. So if you don't have them yet, look in that folder and then install them. I'll click on the BNC Landscape Photoshop Action. And you'll notice I have two layers, one for foreground, one for sky. They both have Midtones 3 masks intersected with them, just to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. And also, both of these layers are curves adjustment layers that are controlled by the color grading tool. We'll start out with foreground layer, come up to the color grading tool, and click on the midtone button. And what I want to do is just lighten up the midtones. And I'll take this over to right there, plus 48. And I want to give it a little bit of a color grade. And I think I'll try right here. And this will just warm up the midtones a little bit. And now let's darken up the shadows. I'll click in the shadow button to add some shadow contrast. I'll drag the brightness slider to the left over to right there, minus 21. I'm not going to do anything with highlights, so we'll leave that alone. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here is after. Now I'm noticing I'm losing a little bit of detail in these waves over in here and in, in this area right here. So I can correct that and I'll show you how we can do that. Come up to the Combo CX panel, click on the right side of this group button 
And when you do, you're going to put the foreground layer inside of a group with a white mask. And what I want to do is get a black brush, and you could click this button right here, and then at 10% brush opacity, I am at 10%. If you're not, just type your one key with a nice soft edge brush. What I want you to do is we'll just paint over this area here and bring back some of the detail in those waves that we lost when we made the uh, opening balance and contrast adjustment here. So I'll just paint over these and bring that detail back just like that. And I think I'm going to paint over here and I think a little bit on here. Yeah, now that detail came back. And if we want to look at this mask, you can click this button right here and you can see where I painted on there. But we have not touched the mask inside of the group, which is really cool. Don't paint on the mask. Put it inside a group. That's called masking the mask. And now let's work on the sky. So click on the sky adjustment layer. Come up to the color grading tool again and click on the midtone button. I want to open up those midtones, lighten up that sky, and I'll take this over to right here, 37. Now I want to give it a little bit of a blue color grade. This is going to be nice. So see my cursor? I'm going to like click right here. Now, if you're not happy with that, you know, you could click anywhere you want to on here, or you can right click on the puck and reset this. And let's say I want to put it like right about here. And now let's shut off this sky layer. Here's before, here's after. I really like that. I don't want to do any more adjustments in shadows or highlights. So we're done here with the sky. And I think we're off to a really nice start. If we come to the combo panel, click this button, we can see we started out here and now we're here. I'm done with the color grading tool. I'll click the X and now we can see the multi mass panel again. At this point of a landscape edit, I always like to try some beautiful mid-tone contrast. So let's do that. Here's the way I like to do it. I'm going to come up to the multi mass panel and I'm going to click this button to add a curves adjustment layer. Come up to the multi mass panel and click this button. We could go and adjust our layer mask. Now, right now, we only have a white mask on here, and I have a curves adjustment layer with no adjustment yet. But what I want to do is I want to add midtone contrast, which will only add contrast to midtones. And I always start out with midtones one. So we'll click on midtones one. Nothing changes, but you can see a midtone one mask right here on this curves adjustment layer. But then what I like to do is come up to the curve presets. This is a drop down menu, give it a click. And I try these different contrast presets in here. And for this image, the one I like the best was increase contrast RGB. So click on that. And now you can see we've added midtone contrast, but I want it to be stronger. So let's try midtones two. I think that's good. Here's what midtones three looks like. It's really strong, but I think midtones two is good. Now it does look a little bit too dark. I'm going to add some mid tone lightning next. Now I'm done with the adjust layer mask panel, so I'll click the X. I want to lighten up the midtone, so come up to the multi mask panel, click on the luminosity mask button, and I want a little stronger effect. So again, I'm going to use midtones too. So we'll click on this button. I'll put it to a curves adjustment layer, and now I want to lighten, so I'll use a screen blend mode. And you could get a screen blend mode by coming to the combo or CX panel and clicking this SCR button. Stands for screen blend mode, and see my midtones have lightened up. Now that's too strong, so what I want to do is take this the whole way off, and then just build this up and see where I think it looks the best. And I think I like it right here at 60. So let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Now let me shut off both of these layers. This is before midtone contrast and this is after. Isn't that nice? We get a nice little pop of color in that beautiful midtone contrast. All the while that I'm editing, I'm studying the image and letting it speak to me and letting me know what it wants. And I think what would be really helpful here is to work on the different color luminosity values. And we have a really cool action in TK9 to do that. And if your TK actions aren't open, and click a TK button on the combo or CX panel and look for this action, color loom. Give that a click. And what you're going to get is a black and white adjustment layer in the luminosity blend mode. So what we're going to do, we can adjust any of these colors, luminosity values. In other words, not give them more or less saturation, but make them lighter or darker. I like to work from the top down. We'll start out with red. See if I adjust the red slider to the right. Anything that's red will get lighter. You see that like on the roofs over there? But I want to darken those up a bit. So I'm going to take this over to right there, minus 16. Isn't that cool? And now for the yellows. Do I want to darken? No, I don't want to darken. I want to lighten. I want to take this to right there, 156. And now for the greens, I think I want to lighten up the greens. Yeah, I want to lighten up the greens a good bit. I'll take this over to 
185. And now cyans. I think I want to lighten up my cyans a little bit. That's darker. This is lighter. I'm going to take it over to right there, 108. Now I want to take the blues a little darker. So we're going to drag this slider to the left and we'll take it to right there, minus 53. Not much of any magenta in the image. I'll skip it. Now let's look at this big change. Let me shut off this layer. This is before and this is after. Isn't that a big change? I love the light we're getting up right in this area here. It's beautiful. I think it's time to work on some of the colors of this image, just some of the weaker colors like reds and yellows. And to do that, we'll use a mask. I'll use a saturation vibrance mask. So come up to the multi mask panel and click this button. Right now we're in saturation one, but I'm looking for weaker colors. So what I want to do is, and I'll typically just click on Vibrance 4 because I'll use that most of the time. If I need to readjust, I could try a three or a five, but I'm going to go with Vibrance 4. And now I need to output this mask. I'll output it to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I want to work on red. So we'll click on the red button. And I want to increase those reds because we have some beautiful reds in those roofs over there. You see that? So I'm going to bring this up to like 56. And now for the yellows, I'll click on the yellow button. And I want to increase those yellows. And you see that yellow saturation coming up under the lighthouse that's really beautiful and i'm going to take it over to right there 46 now let me shut off this layer here's before and here's after i really enjoy this if you're enjoying this video don't forget to please subscribe if you're not subscribed already share and leave comments i'd love to hear from you we get a lot of nice detail and textures in this image and i'd like to bring those out a little bit and i'll use a depth map to do that now i gotta say something about depth maps if you updated Photoshop to the latest update, 26.11, depth maps are broken in that version. They're also broken in Photoshop beta right now. Hopefully that'll get fixed soon by Adobe. In the description of this video, I'll have a link to Tony Kuiper's blog, and he explains all about this. So please check that out. And also when you're over there, click that subscribe button and sign up for Tony Kuiper's blog. He gives you tons of really good information. So do yourself a favor and sign up for Tony's blog. By the way, if you updated Photoshop, you can always go to the Creative Cloud and roll back to the previous version of Photoshop. And then the depth map will work. Now let's add some detail. We're going to use a TK action, a clarity action. If your TK actions aren't open, click a TK button on the Converse CX panel. Look for clarity and give that a click. A high pass filter dialog will come up. And what we'll do is increase the radius to like 20.4 pixels and click OK. And now you can see all that detail here. But what I want to do is have more detail here in the foreground. And as it moves up, becomes less and less. And that's where the depth map comes in. Now, what we need to do is come up to the multi mask panel, hold down your command or control key and click this button right here. And we can see our depth map. Now, this is the opposite of what I want, but what I usually do is just click this button right here, save as a channel and inverse. It'll give me a foreground and a background depth map. So just click that. We're only going to use the foreground, but that's okay. That's a simple one click deal. And now we need to apply the depth map to this layer. So on the Converse X panel, click the layer mask calculator button, click subject foreground, and then click this button to apply it. And now that depth map has been applied. Now you'll note we'll have more detail up in this area and it'll lessen as it goes up in. So let me shut off this layer and hopefully you can see this on the YouTube video. You know, due to the compression, sometimes you may not see it as much, but I guarantee when you add it, you'll definitely see it. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. And I really like that detail. And now for the next step, I want to make sure I really draw the viewer to this area right here. So to do that, we're going to use a freehand vignette. So get the Photoshop selection brush tool. And with a nice soft edge on it, what I want you to do is just like paint on this area right here, just like that. And then if your TK actions aren't open, click a TK button on the Converse CX panel, click on freehand vignette, a Gaussian blur dialog comes up, just click OK. And now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here is after. Now that's too strong. So what I want to do is take the opacity the whole way off. And then let's just build it up slowly. And I think I'll stop right here at 20%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before, here's after. See how your eye is drawn more to this area here just by using that freehand vignette. 
And now, you know what? See this lighthouse right here? I think it's just a little bit too light. I just want to dull it down a little bit. And we'll use a brightness contrast adjustment, but we'll target it with a luminosity mask. On second thoughts, we could use a luminosity mask, but let's use blend if. So here's what we do. Click on the brightness contrast adjustment button and we add a brightness contrast adjustment layer here. And now click on the edit blend if button on the multi mass panel. I only want to target the lightest light. So we're going to click lights six. And if we click this double arrow magenta button, we can see that we will target these areas. We'll get a little bit of the waves here too, which will be fine. It's not going to hurt anything. And now let's make a brightness adjustment. I want to darken it up just a little wee bit and I'll take this over to right there, minus 17. Now let me shut off the magenta overlay by clicking the double arrow button again. And now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and now here is after. I like that much better. And now I'm looking at these rocks over here. I just want to darken down the light areas just a little wee bit. And to do that, I'll target that with a zone mask. Now, right now, Edit Blend If is in my way. I'll click the X. Nothing changes on the Blend If layers. And now we'll click this button right here for a zone mask. And we get a color picker tool. And with the eyedropper, I'm going to click right here. And then click OK in the color picker tool. And you see how nicely these areas are targeted. Now, I'm not even going to refine this zone mask because I think it's perfect just the way it is. Oh, I'll, I'll put this mask to a burn tool. So you could use the left or right side here. It doesn't matter. I'll use the right side. And now with a nice low opacity brush at 10% opacity, and I'm still at 10%. If you're not, just type your one key. And now with a nice soft edge brush, let's just paint over some of these light areas. If you lift your brush and paint again, it'll get a little darker. So just paint till you think you got it right. I don't want to go too dark here, but just enough just to keep the viewer from just wanting to go right to these rocks. I'm just trying to train the eye up into this area here. And I think that's good. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. See, it just tones that area down a little bit. And this is what I call attention to details. All these little changes you make add up to a really great edit in the end. Once you're happy with the job you've done burning, you can deselect your selection by coming to the Converse 6 panel and clicking this button right here to deselect. Now, the final thing I want to do is just close off the top of this image. In other words, just slightly darken down this area to keep the viewer into the frame. Not much. And to do that, I'll use a multiply brush. But I'll use it in a unique way because I'm going to use it to help me set up to use a gradient tool. On the Combo 6 panel, look for the Multiply button. Hold down your Shift key and click it. This gives you a Multiply brush. And what it is is a Curves Adjustment layer with no adjustment in the Multiply Darkening Blend Mode, which is perfect for a gradient tool. And it also has a Black Hide All Mask. That's why we don't see the image getting darker. So now look for your Gradient Tool. Click on the Gradient Tool. And then click this drop down. Click the arrow to open up your TK Gradients. If you don't have them, you can get them over at Tony's Web Store. They're absolutely free. Click the White to Black Gradient. And make sure you have the Linear Gradient clicked on. And that's all you need to do. And now we have to draw the Gradient. See the little cross right there? I'm just going to click here and drag down. As I drag down, I'll hold down my shift key to constrain this to go straight. And I want to drag it down to maybe right about here. Now that's way too strong. And if we don't want to see this line, what we can do is click on the curve icon. And now let's take the opacity the whole way off and just build it up slowly and just darken off the top just a little wee bit. And I think maybe right here at 12%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here is after. See how it just closes off the top a little bit? You don't want it too strong, but just enough. I usually like to add a vignette to a landscape image, but on this image I tried it and I decided I'm going without it. I don't believe I need it for this one. Now let's see where we've come from. On the Converse 6 panel, look for this button, give it a click. We started out here and now we end up here and I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And I do hope you download the image and the PDF notes and give this edit a try. And don't forget, there's a few more days left to the TK Grayscale launch sale and you'll get 25% off your entire purchase. Use my promo code DK15 at checkout. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to an end. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope you try this edit out. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. 
click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.